Donald Trump visits the Detroit childhood home of Ben Carson, right, with Omarosa Manigault Newman during the campaign in September 2016, photo, Max Ortiz slash the Detroit News, by photo. Not many in the black community will be losing sleep over the announcement last week that Omarosa Manigault Newman will exit the White House in January as the highest-ranking African American. Don't expect protests either by activists and civil rights leaders against the Trump administration for reportedly relieving Omarosa, the controversial director of communications for the White House Office of Public Liaison who was reportedly in charge of African American outreach. That is because Omarosa as a black gatekeeper did not deliver as the person Trump needed to seek advice from regarding his engagement with blacks. There is little to show that her time in the White House led to significant initiatives or groundbreaking developments that would help advance the interest of the black community. If anything, Omarosa is an example of what not to be when you are a high-ranking black in any White House you don't brag about the role without successfully executing the duties and responsibilities that come with such an important assignment. Moreover, Omarosa also was carrying with her the burden of race, whether she recognized it or not. With her in the White House, it was an expectation of many in the black community that the administration would have better handled the response to the white nationalists' protest at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. The president's comments faulting both sides in Charlottesville, which appeared to equate the neo-Nazis, white supremacist and racist marchers with the peaceful demonstrators, dealt a blow to an already fractured relationship in the black community. The president's remarks were perceived as a reluctance on his part to single out the white nationalists for condemnation. As the only black in Trump's inner orbit, many wondered what kind of influence Omarosa commanded as Charlottesville unraveled before the nation. We have no idea of what she actually did. Maybe she will tell us someday in a book. Still the White House's disturbing response to Charlottesville was an important marker and a defining moment that should have warranted any conscientious black Trump insider to either resign in protest or in principle. In a recent interview with ABC's Nightline, Omarosa offered this about her soon-to-be former boss. Donald Trump is racial, but he is not a racist. The things that he says, the types of pushback that he gives, involve people of color. These are racial exchanges. Yes, I will acknowledge many of the exchanges, particularly in the last six months, have been racially charged. Do we then just stop and label him as a racist? No, Omarosa said. Her comments offer insight into the mind of the black woman who could have reset the relationship between Trump and the black community after the bruising 2016 presidential campaign. Since the relationship between Trump and blacks was already in bad shape, it was clear that a much trumpeted meeting with over 60 presidents of historically black colleges and universities at the White House was not going to yield anything productive. The meeting billed as a discussion around Trump's executive order on HBCUs which basically moved the initiative for those universities from the U.S.